Okay, Peacemaker Resources is a nonprofit organization that provides training on how to develop healthy communication skills. Tonight I'm going to tell you about the curriculum and share a few skills that might help you understand what kinds of things Peacemaker Resources offers students. First, I would like to introduce you to a few of my personal teachers. These students were presenting at the 2012 Nobel Peace Prize Forum in Minneapolis. We're so proud of them and they really represented themselves well, some of them having been trained for eight years in making peace. <clears throat> These students are uh, explaining their cooperative games to visitors at the Open House for Peacemakers. I'm always so impressed with the confidence and the enthusiasm these students have for teaching adults. And it's one of the things that Peacemaker Resources wants to do, is have them be our leaders, and they are good ones. As students receive lessons in peacemaking, they are taught that peace is not the absence of conflict. Instead, peace comes through our ability to handle conflict and respect and have empathy for others and themselves. The Speak Your Peace curriculum includes many topics and it is a guide for the STAR program, which is, stands for Students Teaching Attitudes of Respect. A team is chosen from participating schools to be leaders in teaching pro-social skills. They attend a total of four days training and then go back to their schools and teach their peers and younger students about what they learned. During the four days of training, students experience cooperative games like the one in this picture. This is a good example of how peacemaker lessons are not only cooperative, but also lots of fun. There's always creativity, laughter, a bit of silliness, and learning. This information that they could, this information that could otherwise be preachy and dry. Here's one of the star students leading a game to answer questions about conflict styles. The combination of using puppets, games, creating stories, and props all add up to the experience of learning to be a peacemaker. It is empowering and exciting to see these students so eager to share what they know with others. In addition to the STAR program, Peacemaker Resources also provides weekly classes for some schools in our area, teaching conflict resolution and communication. The schools that we're in now are Central School, Schoolcraft Learning Community, Solway, War Road, and our goals are to be able to have every child in Bemidji and Northern Minnesota receive this kind of training. In kindergarten, the students are asked to describe what they would hear and see if they were in the circle of hurt or the circle of peace. One little kindergartner known for his bullying behavior said after the lesson, gee, now that I know about the circle of peace, that's where I want to be. <laughs> These young students work at identifying their feelings and understanding and expressing their needs. One of the girls at the Nobel conference explained to the adults how she now knows how to recognize her feelings as she's being triggered and that she asks herself, now what am I needing right now? And she then can do something positive to fill that need instead of taking it out on someone else. If we practice identifying our feelings and meeting our needs, we are giving ourselves empathy. When we take care of our own needs, we will know and how to have compassion for others. The first step in doing this is to be actively listening to others and ourselves. Often listening through our, our personal filters and the Speak Your Peace curriculum introduces students to the concept of listening without fil personal filters. There are six common barriers to effective listening. They are advising, diverting, interrupting, disagreeing, and judging. You might recognize some of those. I'd like to explain how each of these barriers might relate to us. As I explain each one, try to think of an instance when you may have experienced this. One of my friends tells me the other day, my son never wants to get out of bed and go to school. If I were an advisor, I would say, well, here's what you need to do. Next time, just tell him that when you're gonna leave pretty soon and if he doesn't get up, go without him. Or if you're a diverter, you might say, oh, that's okay, let's do something and take your mind off it. Let's go to pachaka cha <laughs> Or if you're telling your own story, you might say, oh, I know exactly how that is. My son is the same way, but he never wants to get up. Or if you're a disagreeer, you might say, he spent the night at my house and he was up bright and early, so I don't think there's a serious problem. Or, judging, he probably just didn't get to bed on time and get enough sleep. Or discounting, 
Oh, you have such a good relationship with your son. I wouldn't get hung up on this issue. Real and effective listening is different, very different, and you don't hear it often. It often includes repeating what the other person has said, such as, I think I understand what you're saying, that you're have tr having troubles getting your son up to go to school every morning. This involves simply stating what you heard. That gives the person a chance to clarify or uh, confirm what you heard. It can often take a more empathetic approach by guessing what the other person is feeling and needing. It sounds like you're really frustrated and need to find a way to get your son up in the morning that's more pleasant. This kind of listening does not advise, judge, divert, or discount. It focuses on having empathy for the other person. One of my second grade students was bullying a younger one on the playground. When I asked him to show me what was happening by using the puppets, he asked if he could act it out at home. I was surprised, but it turned out that his brother was bullying him after school. And when I talked to his mom, she changed arrangements and that child shifted his behavior because he got his power back through being listened to instead of punishing him for being a bully. Mahatma Gandhi once said, an eye for an eye only ends up making the whole world blind. I could have continued to punish my little bully because he was hurting others. Instead, I listened and acknowledged his needs. Peacemaker Resources helped me understand that an eye for an eye is too simple. We can learn to change the paradigm of punishment in schools and replace it with the knowledge of peacemaking. I really want to ex express that this is the most powerful thing I've ever seen children do, and I've seen them do it well. Thank you for the time.